Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon John 13, 1-19 Verse 1 Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Our Lord Jesus Christ had a clear foresight of all he had to endure. Future things are happily hidden from our eyes. We do not even know the moment when we shall die, nor how it will be. It is well that it is so, but our Lord was able to anticipate his sufferings by knowing all about them, Jesus knew that his hour was come. It was all appointed and nothing happens to any of us by accident, chance is banished from the believer's creed. There is an appointed hour for each one of us and it will come in due season. Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of the world unto the Father. What a beautiful way of describing death! Christ's death was certainly a more trying one than ours will be so that this description may apply to ours as well as to his. 2. And supper being ended. I suppose that was the paschal supper. 2. The devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. What a horrible purpose for Satan to put into the heart of Judas even in the presence of Jesus. I hope that the devil will not put any such purpose into your hearts or into mine while we are in this house of prayer, but no place is sacred from his intrusion, he will come in anywhere. Even where Christ, himself, is at the head of the table, Judas may be sitting at that same table and Satan may then and there, put into his heart the horrible purpose of betraying his master. Three, four. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God, and went to God, he arose from supper and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. Notice those words, Jesus knowing dot 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 he took a towel, and girded himself. If he had not known how great he was, there would not have been such condescension in his action, but he knew who he was and what the Father had entrusted to him, the Father had given all things into his hands. You might suppose that he would stand up, in a very dignified manner, and put on a purple robe and a golden belt, but, instead of that, he rose from the supper table, laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. He knew that he had come forth from God and that he was going back to God, and he performed this action on the way home to his father. Oh dear brothers and sisters, if Christ thus stooped, how humble ought we to be! No office should be counted too lowly, no work for his servants should seem to be too humiliating, since Jesus took a towel and girded himself. Five. After that, he poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. You see that Jesus does his work well. He omits none of the details of it. He puts himself in the place of a slave and he performs a slave's duty very thoroughly. I am afraid that, sometimes, we do our work for him in a slovenly way. But Jesus was not satisfied with simply washing his disciples' feet, he must do the wiping, too. I bless him that he did so, for this is a picture of what he has done for us. He has washed our feet and he often repeats the gracious acts. The feet that Jesus washes, he will wipe, he has not begun his task without intending to finish it. I know that he will complete in my soul the work which he has undertaken, for he fulfilled, on the feet of his disciples, the office he had undertaken, he began to wash the disciples' feet, 
and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. 6. Then came he to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? I do not wonder that he said that. Would not you have been equally astonished had you been there? Peter had some faint idea who Christ was. He had confessed him in such a way that Jesus had said to him, Blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Knowing so much about Christ, Peter marveled at his action. He felt so astonished that he asked, Do you wash my feet? 7. Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do, you know not, now, but you shall know hereafter. I have heard this saying of our Lord applied to affliction and it is very true that what Jesus does, we do not, at present, understand, but we shall know, by and by. I do not think, however, that this sentence is very applicable that way, for there was no affliction in having his feet washed. The fact is, brothers and sisters, though it is a very humbling thing to say, we do not understand that which Jesus does, even his simplest actions are a mystery to us. We have never gone into the very depths of them so as to comprehend them. What I do, even though I only wash your feet, plain and simple operation as that is, you know not now, but you shall know hereafter. Our knowing times, dear friends, are to come. We need not be so very anxious to know at present, this is the time of love. I would forego the filling of my head, for a while, if I could have my heart full, but, alas, we are generally so busy trying to attain merely head knowledge. My most intense longing is for a growing heart, a heart that truly loves the Saviour. That is the way for the head to learn, for knowledge that comes by the way of the heart, and so enters the head, is the best of knowledge. Jesus said to Peter, What I do, you know not, now, but you shall know hereafter. 8. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. That is just like Peter. If John had not told us who it was that said this, we would have known that it was Peter. He was always in such a hurry and he spoke so quickly that he made many mistakes, yet he was always so honest and so true, that his master forgave his faults and helped him to correct them. 8. He answered him, If I wash you not, you have no part with me. If Christ does not cleanse us, we do not belong to him. If he does not, day by day, exercise a purifying influence over us, we are not his. 9. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet, only, but also my hands and my head. How that pendulum swings to and fro. It went this way just now, you shall never wash my feet. Now it goes right away to the other extreme, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Go more gently, Peter, be more quiet. Why do you go so far in one direction and then rush off so far in another way? Your master knows better than you know what is right for you. 10. Jesus said to him, He that is washed needs only to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and you are clean, but not all. Dear friends, when we believe in Christ, we are washed in the fountain filled with blood, and we are clean. But this world is such a sinful place that we cannot walk through it for even a day without some of its mire and dust clinging to us. Besides, God's lilies are so pure that they are hardly fit to bloom in such a defiling atmosphere. Oh, how we need that the dew should wash the lily when the night comes. 
how greatly we need to have the foot washing administered to us every day. We need not repeat the first great washing, the bath by which our sins were cleansed, when that was done, it was done once and for all. Our sin was pardoned as before a judge, but we need it to be taken away as before our Father, for we are now under his loving discipline. Christ further said to his disciples, You are clean, but not all. Does he say that to us at this time? You are clean, but not all. Where sits the man, in this house of prayer, who is not clean? The sinner who has not yet been washed by Jesus Christ? Where sits the woman who is not clean? The Lord have mercy upon you, dear friends. You know, that in the olden days, they put a red cross on the door of the house where the plague was. We cannot put a cross upon you, but I pray you to consider yourselves as marked men and marked women in the sight of God. And I pray the Lord to take that mark away by causing you to be washed, that you may be clean every whit. How quickly he can wash the foulest sinners. He that believes in Jesus is washed in the precious blood and he is clean. God cleanse us all for his great name's sake. 11-15 For he knew who should betray him, therefore said he, You are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know you what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and you say well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also, ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. Christ's actions are the pattern for us to imitate. Oh, that we follow them more closely. 16. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Sometimes we think that we are a deal too great to wash anybody's feet, we would like to see a person dare propose it to us, such big people as we are. If we talk like that, there is great need that we should be taken down. That would be the true way to rise in the likeness of Jesus. Oh, that we were lowlier in humility. We should be higher in grace if we were. 17. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Peter needed to know them. Jesus would have us do them. 18. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. Christ is a chosen people, though some will not believe it. Yet it is so, for he says, I know whom I have chosen. 18, 19. But that the scripture may be fulfilled, he that eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it comes, that when it has come to pass, you may believe that I am he. That I am. So, you see, even the great trouble of the early church, the betrayal by Judas, was used by Christ for the strengthening of his disciples' faith. He foretold that it would be as it came to pass. So, dear friends, in these latter days, many forsake the gospel, but Jesus told us that it would be so. He taught his servants to write that there would be a falling away and that in these last days there would be scoffers, and as we read the prophecies and compare them with the fulfillment, even the doleful fact, itself, confirms our faith in our Lord. God bless to us this brief reading of his own word. Amen.